Uh, shall we start, Shijo? One second. Yes, we can start your now. Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, based on which time zone you are located in. Uh, my name is Piyush, and uh, today I am delighted to present you the next talk for our series, uh, IATB Alum Talks. This series is organized by IIT Bombay Alumni Association Hyderabad chapter in association with IITBAA Central Office team from Bombay. Uh, today our speaker is Dr. Bhagwati Prasad, and uh, he will be taking, he will be talking on the interesting topic of uh, Indian healthcare landscape and technology applications. Um, to talk about Dr. Bhagwati, uh, he is an IIT Bombay year 2000 pass out and has over 22 years of experience in the healthcare domain. During these years, he has played uh, many important roles in the areas of uh, new product development and healthcare management education. And currently, Dr. Bhagwati is the COO at Koita Center for Digital Health, located at the IIT Bombay campus itself. Before we proceed to the talk, uh, just a few notes on the logistic points. Since it is a limited one hour session, to save interruptions in between, uh, we will be muting all the participants. Participants can type in chat box any questions they might have during the presentation. At the end of the presentation, based on the available time, we will pick a few questions and request Dr. Bhagwati to answer. For remaining questions, we will download them and uh, get them answered by him offline and send them to the, all the participants on their email address. Now, without much further ado, I welcome Dr. Bhagwati for the talk. Thank you. Dr. Bhagwati, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Piyush, and thank you, IITBA, for giving this honor of inviting me for this particular session. Uh, I'll switch off my video. I'll start sharing my screen. So just give me a few seconds. Okay, Piyush, maybe you can confirm that you can see my slide, title slide. Yes, I can see it. Thank you. All right. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Bhagwati Prasad and today's uh, topic is Indian healthcare, landscape and technology applications. Uh, right in the beginning, I thought I can start with a disclaimer. Uh, and that is that uh, the views that I express today are personal and they do not necessarily represent views of the organization. I also have two disclosures because a lot of people are using generative AI that I have not used generative AI to generate any part of this presentation. And second, I have used in some of my slides some names of the, some companies, names of some products, but I have used these names of products or companies only to give some particular messages that you'll see in my slides. And there is no commercial or other interest uh, behind these companies or behind these products. So I thought it's important to mention that. I have divided my uh, session in four small parts. I'll take approximately 40 minutes for the entire session. Uh, so first, I will talk about healthcare sector. In the second part, I will talk about challenges and growth drivers in Indian healthcare. Third section, we will talk about some of the emerging technology trends and some of the applications uh, in healthcare. And the last uh, uh, section of this talk will be about AI, artificial intelligence and its application, potential applications in healthcare. Right at the outset, I also want to mention that when IITBA reached out to me, uh, I was told that the audience is not going to have necessarily healthcare background. So I have kept my talk intentionally at higher level. So it is going to be a broader talk and not in-depth talk. I've especially kept it very generic so that people who do not have healthcare background can also understand. So it's, it's not going to be heavy with technical contents. It will be just almost like going to touch the surface of healthcare sector or in each of these four sections. All right, so let's uh, jump into the healthcare sector, the first section itself so first. So if, if we talk to uh, different laypersons and, you know, ask them what do they know about healthcare sector, most of them tend to think that healthcare sector is only about hospitals and uh, everybody is familiar with hospitals. Uh, and, uh, but then the sector is not just about, about hospitals. So hospitals, of course, everybody is familiar and these come in two varieties, government hospitals and private hospitals. So I'm not going to spend much time on that. But there are other segments and I thought I can, I can start by covering these uh, list of other segments within healthcare sector. 
So the second segment, so examples of public hospitals are AMC Delhi, for example, and some others. There are uh, private hospitals, Apollo, Max Health Kitchen, and there are many others. Second largest segment in healthcare is that of pharmaceutical companies. And these are the companies which are manufacturing chemicals or drugs for medication for use in humans or sometimes in animals as well. And again, in this box, now I included some names of domestic players as well as some uh, multinational companies. Third segment in healthcare sector is the diagnostics companies. These are the companies which are providing diagnostic services. They typically analyze blood samples or other body fluid samples and uh, provide you some reports based on that. Examples of, I'm sure during COVID times, almost uh, all of you, your family members have worked for some of these tests and some of the names of these players in this segment are now listed in the fourth box from top on the right hand side. Fourth segment in healthcare sector is medical device companies. These are the companies which are manufacturing consumables or implants or large value uh, high end equipment. So examples of consumables would be Band-Aid for example or contact lens or the specs. These are consumables which are medical devices. Uh, implants would be cardiac pacemakers or cardiac stents if you heard about it. These are implants or even the uh, dental implants that we, we have. Uh, examples of large value equipment would be, let's say, ECG machine, CAT scanner, MRI machine. These are examples of large value equipment. So again, I included domestic players in this segment as well as some of the MNC, large MNC names uh, in medical device segment. Uh, fifth segment is that of medical insurance. So just like uh, you must know about uh, life insurance companies provide risk coverage for loss of life. Similarly, medical insurance companies provide risk coverage in case of development disease or if you are hospitalized. Again, names of some of the players in this segment are now listed in this box. And the last segment, last major segment is that of telemedicine. There are some more minor segments, but today for today's talk, these six major segments are sufficient. Last segment is that of telemedicine uh, companies. These are the companies which are providing remote services in rural areas, etc. And some of the names are included. I have also included a few names of the healthcare IT or healthcare product uh, uh, provider companies, Cerner, City, Aztec, Epic, and Mecca Sensor. So the main message behind this particular slide is, is that hospitals is definitely one of the largest segments and 70% of revenue is generated in, in hospitals, but there are five other segments within healthcare sector. If you look at the overall market size world over, um, approximately 12% of world's total GDP comes from healthcare sector. And in terms of value, that is about uh, $12 trillion. Uh, and uh, in rupees, it will be 1,000 lakh crore. And that was the value as per WEF report of 2023 in last year, 2022. And world over, approximately 2% of manpower is employed in healthcare sector. If we compare uh, healthcare sector and employee employment in India, then in India too, uh, healthcare sector is one of the largest employers and uh, healthcare is a fourth largest recruiter in India. Approximately 4.7 million as per the IBF report of May 2023, approximately 4.7 million people in India are recruited in healthcare sector and it's the fourth largest. The other three largest uh, recruiters are uh, agriculture, real estate and retail and fourth is healthcare. In terms of revenue, so last year, if you see, uh, again, as per IBF report of May 2023, last year it was uh, approximately you know, 30 lakh crore rupees. And uh, in terms of dollars, about $372 billion. So that is one part in terms of market size. But more interesting part is the growth rate, if you see for last uh, a few years, the healthcare market has been growing at a CAGR of 22%. And if we know our GDP growth rate, GDP, even pre-COVID times, it was going at a rate of, let's say, 7% or so. So compare where is 22% compared to over in countries' growth rate. So healthcare market is growing at, you know, at least three times the GDP growth rate. So healthcare is one of the, so the key message behind this slide is that healthcare is one of the largest or one of the fastest growing sector uh, within India. So I, I had a brief section introducing about healthcare sector. And so I have key uh, takeaways from this particular small section. One is healthcare is multiple segments. It's not just about hospitals. And second, healthcare is among the fastest growing sectors in India. Now we move to the second section. Here I'm going to talk about the challenges and growth drivers in Indian healthcare. And first, 
in that also i'm going to talk about the challenges and gaps in uh, indian healthcare why am i talking about gaps and challenges in healthcare because any time that you see any gaps in any sector that also means that there are to fill those gaps that means there are a lot of opportunities growth opportunities exist for businesses or for startups to provide new products or services so look at any of the gaps that i'm showing you from that lens that that anyway you see a gap that means there are huge growth opportunities uh, in indian healthcare so first we this particular slide this is old data but uh, i'll let me summarize it this slide compares um, healthcare expenditure in india with other countries in brics what is known as the brics nation so brazil russia china south africa and india and again this slide is a bit older uh, from pwc but as of today uh, as a percentage of government expenditure government spends approximately 1.6% of their budget uh, in healthcare so that 1.3 has become 1.6 and uh, total as part of gdp approximately 5.5 or 5.6% of gdp is spent on healthcare again these 1.6 and 5.5% we compare with brazil or or actually i should compare with china it is much lower than even uh, any of these uh, brics countries again the message behind this particular slide is that if we have to you know reach at par with any of the brics countries or with china again there are large gaps in indian expen uh, you know over expenditure on healthcare side and there is a huge potential for us to reach the levels of other countries in uh, other developing nations similarly this chart is there this is about infrastructure and personnel uh, and this chart compares where we stand compared to who's recommendations for personnel and infrastructure Uh, so who stands for world health organization and world health organization suggests that we should have uh, for example one doctor per 1000 population whereas we have 0.65 so there is a gap of 35% there who recommends that we should have 2.5 nurses per 1000 population whereas we have 1.3 there is a gap of about 50% there who recommends that we should have approximately 3.5 beds per 1000 population but we have what 1.3 and again i have looked at i researched these numbers have not changed significantly so they hold to today as well and others mute please can others mute please uh, yes can you mute others please thank you yeah yeah thank you yeah so i was talking about the gaps that exist in infrastructure and personnel and we are again far below the who targets once again the way to look at these gaps is that there are huge opportunities for us to improve healthcare infrastructure or healthcare personnel even these limited infrastructure or personnel which are there uh, if we see where these are deployed and this particular chart shows Uh, distribution of doctors in rural versus urban areas so two thirds of indian population resides in rural areas and one third in urban areas but if we see distribution of doctors it is completely flipped two thirds of the doctors are operating in urban areas and hardly one third of the doctors operate in rural areas and once again the way to and by the way this again same continues to apply for number of hospital beds number of surgeons number of nurses etc same uh, skewed ratio continues for other personnel as well as infrastructure and once again the way to look at it is that means that there is a huge potential for us to change these ratios there is a huge potential for us to be better in rural areas uh, and if you to be at par with urban areas uh, there is huge potential in rural areas tier 3 and tier 2 towns and i want to now talk about some of the specific examples here and here i have compared uh, health sector is a travel sector and just to, just to contrast you know what type of services are available let's say in travel sector and what is happening in uh, in healthcare sectors because this contrast sort of helps in realizing what, what type of gaps are there and i i am in digital health right now so in a way these relate to uh, digital health related gaps so for example there are multiple websites you can go to the website and easily compare uh, air fares you just search mumbai to delhi for example and you can find irrespective of you know multiple airlines and their prices their schedule you can easily find but if i had to do the same thing for finding out i want to do knee replacement or go for cardiac surgery or something and i want to do compare treatment charges i i think 
there are no no resources available so this is an example of how things are operating in travel sector just to just to compare cost and such facilities or services are not available in the healthcare sector again an opportunity for potential uh, entrepreneurs in the audience to take this up and maybe do something about it similar example if you travel uh, far then you sometimes you need to change aircraft or maybe even you need to change airlines and you may check in your baggage at the, at the origin and you seamlessly pick up your baggage especially if you travel international more or less you have to change airline definitely aircraft uh, and seamlessly you pick up your bag at the destination so what i'm trying to say is you can you can transfer your baggage from one plane to another plane or one aeroplane to another plane there is something happens behind the scene that it happens but now try to do the same thing you have you or your family member has got hospitalized and now you try to transfer that those records from one hospital to another hospital and i can say it's virtually impossible to do that right so this is another example of gap that exists in a way again opportunities for entrepreneurs to do something about it and similar another contrast with comparison uh, with the travel sector uh, we can easily find uh, an empty airplane or maybe train seat but as we many of us learned in covid times if i had to do the same thing trying you know to find an empty icu bed it's uh, virtually again not possible as of today so once again another opportunity for entrepreneurs to do something about it and another simple one which probably must most of you familiar that we can easily book or track a taxi or, or auto rickshaw but uh, but it is difficult to to book or book or track an ambulance so these are a few examples that i have taken comparison of travel sector versus healthcare sector to quickly contrast and understand what type of gaps exist uh, in healthcare sector whereas other services we are sort of got used to uh, seamlessly we are able to access such services so again from this section i want to give quick uh takeaways to uh, take away from here as well so there are many gaps in healthcare infrastructure and personnel uh, which i gave you a few examples of that and we also compared a few aspects so how travel sector we are availing some of the services we got so used to those services and if we contrast those with healthcare sector uh, it, it is bizarre that those services are not available in the healthcare sector but at the same time all these gaps also mean that they are opportunities for for entrepreneurs for startups and and growth potential is there so these are the key messages for this section now let's look at the another subsection of section 2 which is about the growth drivers in indian healthcare and i straight want to jump into abdm which is ayushman bharat uh, digital mission and i want to talk about the main modules there are five main modules as part of abdm and, and these are in this uh, dash box so, th so there are two registries one is called hfr and one is called hpr hfr stands for health facility registry and hpr is for H health professional registry so these are two modules so what hfr is going to do as part of ebdm is that it will provide a list of all the public hospitals private hospitals ayush hospitals clinics uh, pharmacies diagnostics labs etc nursing homes so again as consumer as a patient you will be able to have a list of all the authorized and, and uh, listed healthcare service providers hpr similarly will have a list of healthcare professionals so again all the medical professionals whether those are quite i sure or pathy doctors there a list of approved medical professionals will be available uh, as part of hpr aabha stands for aishman bharat health account earlier it was called health id and now it has been changed it's called health uh, account number now aishman bharat health account as part of that everybody who registers will be given a 14 digit unique number and what you are expected to do is whenever you avail some healthcare service you share that your own unique aapa number with the service provider so when you go to let's say hospital you share that number when you go to diagnostic lab you share that number when you have some medical reports you share that number and what will happen is then all these records whether the prescription diagnostic report or medical records health records etc they will get linked to yourself uh, and that is the advantage of having a new unique number for aba hie and cm these are these stand for health information exchange which is a patient facing app which is like a locker 
so what will happen is if you provide your APA account number at uh, healthcare service providers, then all those records where you given your APA number will get in a way linked to your uh, local. And CM stands for consent manager. As part of this patient facing app, you will also have ability to provide consent. You will be the owner of your health records, whether those are prescriptions, diagnostic reports, or medical reports. You will be owner of those records and you will be able to give consent. So, suppose in last year you went to three different doctors for three different purposes, but now you are going to, for some reason, you are going to another doctor. And with this doctor, fourth doctor, you want to share only one particular event's uh, prescription or medical record. So through this consent manager, you will be able to give uh, access to this particular clinicians, let's say for a week. So that only that report for whatever duration that you selected in consent manager, those reports will be shared with that particular clinician for the, uh, that much amount of time only. After that, that consent will be revoked. And once again, your reports will be private and between two sides of it. One side of the apps is the consumer facing apps, another side is the service provider. So UHI is going to provide that uh, open platform, just like UPI exists, like that is going to provide an open platform using which uh, consumers can avail variety of services provided by different stakeholders in healthcare sector. So I thought it is important to talk about this wonderful initiative that Government of India started, APDM, Aishman, Bharat, Digital Mission, and at least take the quick overview of ABDM here. And as I said, uh, ABDM will allow seamlessly inter in an interoperable manner, uh, multiple applications to talk to each other. And various stakeholders will be able to uh, seamlessly exchange information, data, knowledge with each other. And these stakeholders are listed here, which include, of course, patients, uh, health applications, hospitals, laboratories, uh, pharmacies and other providers. And just like UPI, uh, I think most of you are familiar, Unified Payment Interface and uh, uh, just like UPI led to a lot of innovation and startups in uh, digital payment and financial sector, uh, I believe that UHI is going to become the UPI of healthcare sector and uh, it is going to lead to large number of uh, startups, innovative startups and a lot of innovations in the healthcare sector and definitely the quality of service that we receive as consumers and patients and care providers will be definitely better uh, with the use of UHI. As of yesterday, there were 47 crore ABA numbers that were generated. If you are not generated, please go ahead and generate. It is for free. Uh, more than 31 crore health records have been linked to ABA. Uh, and uh, more than 2 lakhs health facilities have been registered, more than 2 lakhs health professionals have already been registered on ABDM platform. I also thought I can have one slide about uh, different growth drivers. We already looked at some of the growth drivers on supply side. Uh, we looked at some of the gaps, uh, rural urban divide, personal infrastructure, health insurance coverage is also, as of, as of today, I believe, 40% of uh, population is not covered, about 60% population is covered, but 40% of Indian population does not have health insurance. Uh, technological advancements are also helping in service providing and uh, improving their uh, services, and that is also uh, improving healthcare sector. COVID also had impact on supply side in terms of, you know, it pushed uh, digitization and digitalization. Uh, among service providers. So these are some of the growth drivers on supply side. On demand side, if you look at, so again, there are multiple major factors and quickly we can uh, talk about each of these. So one, slowly our lifestyle is becoming sedentary. We are no, no longer physically act active anymore. And people like me, we sit in front of computer 10 hours, 12 hours in a day. And this is this change in lifestyle is causing an increase in non-communicable disease. And that is again leading to uh, increase uh, burden of disease and leading to increased demand of healthcare services. Second, there is a now more overall, there is more disposable income available in Indian population and that in a way means that uh, population demands better and more uh, health services. 
now population also has access to a smartphone and internet that means that they have access to information and knowledge in some ways and if anybody falls ill uh, in ourselves or in our family first thing that we do is we go to google and start searching for the symptoms and see what it means and maybe we'll start taking some medicines on our own you know self medication will start and the point is that uh, we we all have access to information and knowledge uh, at our fingertips and that is again a sort of that awareness and knowledge is increasing the demand for healthcare our population demography is also changing uh, birth rate as you know in india is decreasing life span is increasing so what it means is the proportion of uh, people who are aged is increasing i believe as of today it's about 15% and by 2030 that ratio will become 20% and uh, as you all must be familiar that in old age people tend to fall ill more frequently than than in younger years so again as the indian uh, population's demographic profile changes and uh, aged population increases that means more and more healthcare services infrastructure will be required next is the medical tourism uh, besides the covid times overall um, health medical tourism is increasing in health in india the the cost of healthcare services is much lower compared to most or i can say probably all of the or most of the western countries so what happens in many of the westerners they come to india for availing their healthcare services because they have to pay multifold uh, amount of money in their home country for the same healthcare services so that that term for such people who come to india for medical treatment is called medical tourism and the, uh, besides the covid times when there were lockdowns and international uh, flights as travel blocked uh, overall medical tourism tourism is on the rise covid also impact had impact on demand side as well and uh, it sort of caused all of us to be more aware about health it also of course increased demand for telemedicine and e pharmacy as well so these were some of the major factors on demand side for uh, increasing health healthcare products and services and uh, third section on this slide is about the public uh, or government support through policy and again i have few bullet items here government launched a couple of years back i think 5 years back a pmj by pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana this is the largest health insurance program in the world uh, approximately 55 crore people are people uh, below poverty line are covered in this health insurance scheme so that is an example of policy support by government of india uh, government also plans to increase the health expenditure on healthcare as i said it is about 1.6 1.65% 1. and at least the target for 2025 is Uh, 2.5% of the gdp so again if government increases from 1.65 to 2.5% it should uh, you know lead to uh, growth in healthcare sector as well as of today uh, 100% foreign direct investment is allowed in healthcare sector so that's another growth driver and in recent years government has announced pli or production linked incentive scheme for pharma and medical device companies as part of this scheme Uh, government ex- expects you to manufacture certain medical devices or medicines and if you do that then government is subsidizing 5% to 20% of your your investment so these are this slide was about i know this is a busy slide but this is about i want to cover this in a single slide this is about the growth drivers for healthcare sector in india now there is a question that uh, i thought at least i i Uh, probably may, we may not use chat but i thought i can ask you this question which apps do you use for social media and which apps do you use for for payment so take a few moments to think about it uh, you may not answer but at least think about it and uh, if i had to sort of guess what answers would come i think for social media most of uh, the apps that you use may get covered here and if i had to list most of the payment apps many of those answers probably will get covered in the list that i have prepared without asking you. now if i had to ask you what trends do you see in these these two lists and and i when i did this exercise i thought there was something interesting that was happening one is the social media apps that we use these apps are same as what global population uses there is the payment apps or that we use are mostly indian actually all of these are indian and there are there are now gpay and whatsapp are also which which you can go global but mostly these are indian apps 
And I was wondering why is it like that? So there were a couple of insights I thought which were there. One is probably, uh, you know, we, we, we trust these global companies with our personal data, but maybe we don't trust them with, with our money. Uh, but the joke being aside, I think this is also about maybe uh, maybe behavior that our motivations and behavior in terms of purchase or payments are, I think, different compared to, let's say, using social media platforms. And I want to extend the same argument about what healthcare apps do we use. Okay, and once again, maybe you can take a few moments to think about it, what uh, healthcare apps are using. And again, I went to internet, searched for most of the popular apps in India, and I think close to 20 apps that were listed on internet, I have listed here. And to all of these are Indian apps. So what, what is what is happening here? So in my opinion, there are again a few things, uh, a few key, key takeaways uh, from from these observations. One, I think that uh, there are there are a lot of factors which are local for healthcare. Uh, this could be as simple as type of diseases that we suffer. I think these diseases sometimes, for example, TB is prevalent in India may not exist in many of the Western countries. That's an example of that. Our healthcare systems are different, right? Uh, the way government delivers healthcare is different. The way insurance uh, provides payment is different. Not just these, uh, the, the language that you use in multiple parts of India is different. It's not just even English or Hindi everywhere, right? Uh, the vocabulary that we use is different. I was speaking to a healthcare service provider, which is in speech therapy in the US a couple of days back. And they have close to 200 million reports already in US and they try, they are trying to enter Indian market. And then he told me, the CEO is telling me that they have to change, for example, even accent because that accent is not acceptable or not understood in their app. That is not understood by Indian population. So even accent is an issue. The vocabulary that they use in US is different compared to the vocabulary that we use. Uh, the images that they use in their app, they are not suitable for, for Indian audience, whether, whether those are even pictures of birds or animals, even those are not because Indian population may not be familiar with the animal or birds which are maybe frequently seen. In this. So point is that there are a lot of things that are there in India, language, vocabulary, accent, type of diseases that we have, healthcare system that we have, insurance coverage which is there. They are, they are sort of, these problems are unique uh, to India and for those reasons, in my opinion, the solutions in healthcare sector or innovations for healthcare sector that will come will all be in Indian, just like these uh, list of about 20 apps show here. And I don't think that uh, what are solutions that may have worked in, in Western countries, I don't think they are going to be suitable. At least they are not readily suitable, that's for sure. But I still feel that uh, it is going to be Indian startups which are going to uh, innovate and provide new services and products in India. So key takeaway uh, from this section is there are multiple and significant growth drivers uh, in Indian healthcare. And the second key takeaway is there is vast potential, in my opinion, for local innovation due to the unique needs and behaviors that we have in Indian population, which differs from needs and behaviors of, let's say, Westerners. All right, so third section is about emerging technology trends. and. Uh, Globally, there are, it's not just the healthcare, traditional healthcare company, which are solving healthcare problems, but actually the tech companies are also started investing in healthcare. So Alphabet, which is owner of Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, these are tech giants, all of them are investing in healthcare. A couple of years back, Apple's CEO, Tim Cook, he said in an interview that biggest contribution of Apple to mankind will be in healthcare. What it means is what he's saying is that uh, in a decade or, or two, Apple will be known as a medtech company and no longer as a, as a computing device company or a mobile phone company. So that is the type of, you know, you can say strategical decisions are being taken uh, in these tech giant companies. These are not the only tech giant companies, but there are many more Facebook, IBM, Intel, Oracle, Samsung, Google, all of them are investing in healthcare. Indian conglomerates are not far behind. Reliance, Tata, SpiceJet, Adani, these groups are investing in healthcare. Reliance is uh, acquired majority stake in uh, e-pharmacy firm called NetMeds. Tata Group has acquired majority stake in 1MG, another e-pharmacy. 
SpiceJet has started its own uh, diagnostic chain called Flebo, and Adani uh, Group is investing in healthcare through its uh, uh, social arm Adani Foundation. Uh, we'll spend some time on this. This particular slide indicates some of the technological advances, and I have only one slide, as I said in the beginning, that I will not go in depth, and I just wanted to give you a broader view, and not in depth view. But I want to spend some time on this slide. So this is, in a way, a summarize of what is happening in terms of technological advancement, or what is expected. Uh, so there are, you see in this particular chart, some concentric circles. Each concentric circle covers a duration of about five years. So it starts from 2015 and ends at uh, 2035. Also, there are these red bars. Each of these red bars uh, tentatively indicate when a particular application of technology in healthcare is likely to be commercialized or likely to be available mature. Let's look at a couple of, uh, a few of these. Uh, what is likely to be available, let's say, by 2035. So first one, I'm starting on the left-hand side, and I'll, as I said, I'll cover some of these. Uh, Brain-computer interface, what it means is that our brain activity will be measured and defined to, to an extent that we'll be able to communicate, uh, you know, without speech with, with other, others or other devices. We'll be able to even control uh, some other devices without speaking or without taking any action, just, just by thinking things. So that is what is the advancement that is expected under pain computer interface. In 3D bioprinting, what is expected is that our organs in case of some injury or organ failure, those organs will be printed in the lab and will not be made with artificial materials but will be made from actual live cells. In case of nano robotics, what is expected is that by 2035, we'll have nano robots which will be sent through your blood streams and they can deliver specific drugs at specific targets or maybe genes and can be used for therapy or they can also be useful maybe for diagnostics as well. 3D printed drugs, uh, as of now the drugs are mass produced and in a way same tablet is given to uh, you know multiple people who are taking but in case of 3D printed drugs what is expected is that a printer will be available in hospital or in the clinic and depending on the patient's need uh, drugs, customized drugs will be printed for that pers specific person. So it will not be mass produced, it will be specifically produced for a person's need. That is what is expected. In terms of electroceuticals, so normally drugs have, drugs have some chemicals. In case of electroceuticals, it is expected that uh, we will again inject some devices in bloodstream and those devices will provide some electrical impulses and through their neurostimulation, uh, some of the diseases will be cured or measures will be taken. So example or applications of such technologies would be, for example, it can be useful for reduction of pain, it can be useful for hearing loss, maybe even vision loss. Medical tricorder, many of you may have seen in Star Trek, these will be consumer facing devices. So consumer in their own houses can use these devices to quickly uh, scan their body and find out multiple parameters, multiple vitals, as well as at least majority of the common diseases they will be able to identify on their own uh, using those what is known as medical tricorders. Digital avatars or digital twins are basically going to be simulation of your entire anatomy and physiology uh, uh, in, in a computer. So they will have all the data available and they can model your body, how your body is expected to react. So for example, uh, your neuromuscular system can be completely modeled and, and in case of some injury, your surgeon can actually see what type of stresses are going to be there. Let's say for the implant that he or she is considering for you. And then for your unique anatomy, uh, he or she will design uh, a unique implant so that it doesn't fail and it will be able to take that those special stresses or load as per your, uh, your own anatomy. Uh, in case of 3D printed medical devices, medical devices uh, could be dentures, could be complex bones, etc. These will be printed in the lab. Uh, enhanced prosthetics. So as of now, if somebody is amputated and uses an artificial hand or leg, of course, from anatomy point of view, that part of the body has been sort of replenished. But the person cannot feel the objects, cannot move the, uh, cannot feel the objects, right? Uh, in case of enhanced prosthetics, it is expected that the person will also get the tactile feel and will be able to manipulate the objects that he or she is feeling uh, better. 
uh, precision medicine most of the time just like the drugs precision medicine also means that uh, usually you use population data to to design any therapies or to measure risk in case of precision medicines it will not be the population data it will be individuals either let's say genomic data or lifestyle data other data environment data it will be individuals data that will be used and the therapy that will be provided uh, to that person will be individual specific and that is the term that is used is uh, precision medicine for that embedded sensor cardiac pacemakers are already there and uh, already cgm continuous gl uh, glucose monitoring is becoming popular which is a sort of uh, a device that you put on your side of the arm and similarly many more wearable devices are likely to be available by 2035 and uh, in case of regenerative medicine we can take out our own uh, blood cells and then retune them regenerate them uh, and uh, use this for therapy so such technologies are already being used uh, for immunotherapy in, in cancer for dealing with cancer so these are just uh, in a way, in a single slide, some of the advancements that are taking place or are expected in, in the next decade or so are listed here. And another message that I wanted to give uh, in this slide is that to develop these devices, once again, we need multiple or interdisciplinary approach and computer scientists, electrical engineer, and all types of engineers, including maybe even aeronautical uh, engineers for, let's say, application drones are required uh, for advancements in, in healthcare. So though in the previous slide, I talked quite some about, about tech. Personally, as a person, I don't like tech being pushed just, just for the sake of it. And I like uh, tech can be used by the service providers, but I feel as much as possible, the uh, uh, customer facing items or service or expenses should be as uh, smooth as possible, as friction free as possible. And I just wanted to quickly take an example of let's say elderly in our households and i think all of you must have experienced this situation most of the elder, elder people in our homes they need to take multiple medicines uh, they need to remember they need to organize those medicines they need to remember what medicines or combination of medicines have to be taken at what time they need to remember to reorder so that they, they can refill those medicines uh, but if you think about elderly many times they may even struggle depending on their age of course uh, to even open those uh, medication container and again if I pose this question of you know how can you help in let's say medication reminder or refill reminders I'm, I'm reasonably sure the most of the audience here will say well let's develop an app we'll use the IML and let's do that and now let's look at this video and how they have tried to solve this problem for elderly no, it's actually not just meant for elderly but I was taking an example of elderly because they have this problem and to a greater extent than let's say most of most of us here so watch this video it's just one and a half minute long video pill pack is a new kind of pharmacy we package your medication and deliver it directly to your door all you have to do is tear and take your next dose managing your medication has never been easier here's how it works each month we'll sort your meds including any vitamins and otcs into easy to open packets Need other items like inhalers, creams, or testing supplies? We can send those too. We'll work directly with your doctors and insurance to resolve any issues. We'll adjust your medication if your prescriptions change, and we'll automatically handle all of your refills so you never have to worry. If you have questions or need to make an update, our pharmacists are available 24-7. Getting started is easy. You'll need your insurance information and a list of current medications. From there, we'll handle the rest. We'll verify your account and transfer your prescriptions to our pharmacy. You'll receive your first package in just a few weeks. Now, you'll never sort your pills, never stand in line at a pharmacy, and never miss your medication again. It's your medication made easy. All right, so by the way, PillPack has been acquired by Amazon. Uh, so if you saw this solution, what they've done is when they made the pouch, very easy to tear so when elderly can tear we don't, they don't have to struggle with bottle bottle caps and so on uh, they put the medication time and date right on the pouch on the sticker in large font so it's easy to do i i won't say it is impossible to miss because it, it probably elderly will still miss out but when they look at those pouches they will immediately realize that oh i missed and they will definitely take 
at the next moment that next time that they that they look at it uh, so the message behind this video for me uh, that i want to convey was that of course we are talking about technology application in today's session but maybe use technology for yourself as a service provider or manufacturer but but see sometimes the solution customer facing solutions can be much more much simpler and try to come up with innovations uh, like what i showed you in this video so i i like uh, this type of solutions offered by billpack here so key takeaways from this section number three are two one uh, what i showed you here was global tech companies and indian conglomerates are investing heavily in healthcare and uh, second i also discussed some examples of uh, innovation which are expected by 2035 or so and there's a lot of scope for multidisciplinary innovation in healthcare with that we move to the last section which is about ai and its application in healthcare don't worry it's not going to be in depth and not uh, technical so first of all what is ai and again i've taken a very simplistic uh, definition of ai and to me ai is basically pursuit of imitating human capabilities and again i have taken those capabilities also in three categories perception action or competition on perception side for example we can see things we can understand speech on action side of our motor skills we can move things we can create things we can converse with people right uh, on competition side we can recognize faces or objects or if there are different objects we can find how one object is different so these are the type of capabilities that are uh, being sort of imitated by computers or software programs and that is what is called as artificial intelligence ai has not been new ai term and machine learning actually these terms were coined in 1950s the first chatbots eliza and first mobile intelligence robo was also developed in 1960s then there was sort of lull phase 1990s then we had a lot of advancements in the speech and video processing and recent years for recent two decades there were a lot more advancements specifically last few years specifically again chat gpt so a lot of uh, generative ai has come and uh, we can even create content and images and videos and so on some people don't like the term artificial intelligence so there are other terms augmented intelligence computational intelligence intelligent agent these are the other terms that are used and i've taken an example of what could be an intelligent a simple schematic to understand so it will have so this intelligent agent will interact with the environment so that means it needs to have either some sensors or it needs to acquire some data that is one part and then it will have internal conditions or rules it may have those rules by algorithm or it may be trained once those conditions the rules are in place and it acquires some data uh, from or signals from the environment then it decides what is to be done next again those actions are either taken carried out or maybe some data are provided back in the environment so this is a simple example of what an intelligent agent is very very sim simple view of ai and i again i quickly wanted to give you some example and again i have taken very very simple most of the audience may be familiar examples of ai in day to day use so so for example if you want to any purchase website or social media feeds ai is there is something running behind the scene which suggests what next you can purchase what feed to show you or if you are watching some movie it will suggest what next you can watch or if you are listening to a song what next to to hear for example so these are called recommendations engine i went to amazon and i searched for notebook for writing but then for example it's it, it gave me suggestion that i could also purchase a mac notebook this is an example of a recommendation engine and in healthcare if similar recommendations had to be applied those could be for example used in triaging a patient uh, a clinician's assistant can ask some questions before the person meets the clinician and uh, what question to ask next could be like it's equivalent of a recommendation engine or similarly a clinician can use a recommendation engine uh, to to decide what medicine options are available for a particular patient can even avoid drug to drug interaction as well voice assistants i think in most of the audience will be familiar alexa siri google assistants these are examples of voice assistants and in healthcare these voice assistants can be of use uh, uh, for providing bedside assistance especially especially in icus where the uh, patients are most of the time bedridden and for long durations another example you may be familiar with chatbots the example of ai again these type of chatbots in healthcare can be useful for appointment booking or answering queries of patients caregivers or consumers 
self driving cars are complex uh, ai systems and again as you can imagine these uh, uh, self driving autonomous vehicles will have multiple sensors to sense what is happening in their surroundings what cars are there what is the speed what are the traffic signals uh, etc so these will these will have very very complex ai system so similar uh, complex ai with multiple sensors can be useful in healthcare for designing surgical robots which can assist uh, other surgeons for complex surgeries and the last example that i'm taking is bing chat or chat gpt example of generative ai of course can be used for chat we can also create new content we can also use it to summarize uh, whatever uh, inputs or content that we provide to it in healthcare such uh, generative ai can be useful for providing education or sharing knowledge with both consumers or patients as well as uh, the clinical personnel so if you look at the ai adoption in healthcare globally uh, it is it is slower than most of the other uh, other sectors like retail education even financial media and entertainment tends to be far ahead manufacturing etc so this is for a global level and uh, healthcare is here uh, and i'll say naturally so because ultimately in healthcare we are dealing with life and death situation and we don't want you know technology uh, or what unverified technology to be deployed which can uh, sort of cause mishaps so for those healthcare for those reasons healthcare also tends to be much more regulated than than let's say media and entertainment and for those reasons uh, ai adoption and for that matter even technology adoption uh, in healthcare tends to be slower than many of the sectors in india also ai adoption for similar reasons as per pwc report of september 2023 has been slower than let's say financial services manufacturing travel or, or telecommunication etc so i'll say i'm not surprised that adoption in india and uh, is also slow for ai or other technologies this slide uh, shows number of uh, uh the medical devices that US FDA has approved which incorporate some form of AI and as of now these AIs are being used in medical devices for classification prediction or voice recognition in terms of clinical side most of the time they are being used for some sort of imaging application an example would be you take an x-ray and then let's say a chest x-ray and then try to identify whether somebody has cancer uh, or not Similarly, uh, second largest application would be in cardiovascular. So you take ECG signal and then try to predict whether somebody is likely to have adverse cardiac event or not. So these are again some examples of uh, application of AI in healthcare. When I look for Indian companies which have US FDA approved devices and which are using AI, they, I could find only two such companies, and the companies are Medio and Artelis, and they're products are called Trishti and Medios both of these companies are using these medical devices with AI for same application glucose screening for what is also known as diabetic retinopathy screening so these are the only two devices that i could find which are approved by US FDA so key uh, so i sort of come to the end of my session overall key takeaway behind this particular fourth section is that AI adoption and for that matter technology adoption tends to be slow in healthcare because we are dealing with life in that situation but at the same time the slow nature also means that there is room for growth there because we are so far behind compared to let's say travel and manufacturing uh, and entertainment sectors that there is a huge potential for track application to be deployed in healthcare sector so i come to my last slide so i had my presentation in four sections the first section we uh, sort of took an overview of healthcare sector and what we learned was it's not just about hospitals but and we also so that the healthcare sector in india is growing at 22% chgr which is three times at least three times more than the uh, gdp growth rate and healthcare is one of the fastest growing sectors in india second sections we looked at various uh, gaps which are also opportunities so many opportunities are waiting to be captured by entrepreneurs and startups third we looked at some of the technology applications we looked at one slide multiple examples of how these uh technologies are being used uh and uh, we also looked at some of the tech companies which are investing heavily in healthcare and trying to solve some of these gaps and the last we looked at ai briefly we defined what is ai and we also looked at some examples of ai in in healthcare and other ways too 
and overall the message here was that technology adoption and adoption of AI also tends to be slow. But again, the slow once again means that there are there is a lot of room for growth. I think I've taken slightly more time, but still there is some time for question and answer. I've not exceeded that one hour duration. I included my email address and mobile number on this slide. So feel free to reach out to me. I think there are five minutes or so, so I'll be happy to take some questions today. Otherwise, feel free to reach out to me separately as well. And glad to interact with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bhavati. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. It was a very good presentation. Uh, uh, since we have very less uh, minutes left, or around four minutes, so I'll just quickly, because there are a lot of interesting questions. Uh, so I wanted to uh, just ask a few questions, which, uh, uh, which are uh, a bit uh, interesting. Uh, so I'll just uh, talk about like two two questions which are coming uh, from the group. One is about the uh, concern that the integration of technology. So this is a question from Tanya Lama, that the, the integration of technology to the public health system uh, has some basic issue of infrastructure. So uh, even Aishman Bharat seems to be dependent on the ASHAs for data and first level interaction. So any thoughts on that? And the other thing which is uh, coming up from the questions is like the data privacy. So. Uh, there, there are some privacy concerns about this uh, data being stored centrally there. So if you can just share your uh, thoughts on a few, uh, few minutes on these things. Uh, yeah. Okay, so first of all, welcome Tanya. I did see you in the chat. So Tanya and I have worked uh, together earlier a few years back. So welcome Tanya. Nice to uh, see you part of the session. Nice. So two questions she asked. Yeah, two questions. No, she no, asked. no. no. So uh, first was for Tanya, other was from Dr. Suraj. And, okay, uh, okay, uh, okay, all, okay, all right, all right, all right. So thank you. So let me answer the second question first, uh, which was about privacy. Uh, and then I'll come, come to the first question. So about ABDM, one I can say is that data, data are going to be uh, stored in whatever source. So if hospital has taken your data, data will be with the hospital. If a diagnostic lab has collected some data, the data will be with the diagnostic lab and so on. Central government is not collecting any data. They are not collating data. They are not taking your data anywhere. So that is one part. Second, through this, what I covered, HIE or CM, uh, Health uh, Information Exchange Consent Manager. If you use any of these public uh, uh, patient-facing apps, you will have and you use APA, then you will have control on your health record. And if you use APA number, irrespective of whether the data were collected in a diagnostic lab or nursing home or in a clinician's uh, clinic, you can get all these data uh, with time, of course, when all this is implemented. Uh, so with this ABDM, one concept is that the patient will be having ownership of the data. And, and data are not being collected. So data will remain in their place. Through these apps, data will be seamlessly transferred. Does it make sense? So in this case, in my opinion, if this is implemented effectively, I personally do not see any uh, issues. I, of course, hacking and technological issues are separate, but otherwise, in terms of guidelines and framework which is being put in place, I do not see. In fact, as of today, if you think about it, if you go to, uh, if you are admitted in hospital, you don't even get access to your own medical reports, right? That is the situation. In a way, what it means is, you don't, you are, you are not owner. Actually, you are the owner, but hospital claims that they are the owner of your records. But through APDM, now you will have ownership of it. And through this consent manager, you will be able to provide consent for sharing this. So I believe as far as the guide, guidelines, policy, and framework that is being prepared, uh, it gives more control to the user or the patient compared to what is the situation. So that is the answer to, the, to this question. And in terms of Infrastructure, I completely agree, especially on public health side, it is extremely uh, important. And I know that most of the work on uh, grassroots levels are being carried by, uh, you know, by ASHA workers, Samanwadi workers, and so on. So it is it is tough, and they they are they are they are overworked. They are overloaded. They have multiple government programs they need to deal with. So I think those challenges are real. But we have to think of how to leverage technology there also and, and see how we can make their life easier or clinicians life easier would be the approach to take in my but but those challenges are real uh, about infrastructure and personal in healthcare thank you uh, 
thanks a lot dr bhagwati uh, there are many other questions very interesting questions but because of lack of time uh, we will not be able to cover all of them but uh, rest assured uh, we will get all of them answered by dr bhagwati and we will send it to you back on your email address uh, that is uh, there and other thing uh, somebody asked about the presentation being available off i mean the video being offline available yes it will be available on the uh, itb alumni association uh, youtube channel it is being recorded live and uh, uh, we will share the link of that as well in the email with that uh, uh, i would like to close up uh, this talk today thanks a lot dr bhavati i am i i enjoyed personally a lot about the session and i'm sure that uh, it would be uh, very interesting and informative for everybody here uh, on behalf of uh, uh, it bombay alumni association uh, we thank you uh, for the talk today thank you thank you please thank do you. share the thank questions you, thank you dr bhavati thanks bye thanks do share the questions sure definitely thank you have a nice day everyone